Edexcel A-Level Physics Core Practical 16. Determine the value of an unknown mass using the resonant frequencies of known masses on a spring. You will be using this video to take readings to complete this core practical as well as plan the core practical and determine your findings for the unknown mass. This method is the basis of how astronauts measure their mass in space. So astronauts on the International Space Station are up there for extended periods of time from three to six months. And there are big changes in your body when you are actually in orbit around the Earth. Your bone density changes and the actual total mass of your body changes. So they need a method of recording this change and what they use is a device that uses a spring and basically the frequency of oscillation determines what their mass is. The next slide shows you an astronaut in space, a Canadian astronaut called David Saint-Jacques in space explaining the device that they use. Every once a month we uh, measure our weight. Not even your weight in space since we don't weigh much here, right? Well, you can actually still measure your mass by measuring your momentum. You do that by going on a swing and measuring the frequency of your swing. Check this out. Now look at this. This is how fast this was swinging when I was on it. If I start it without me on it, it's going to be much lighter. Look at that. It goes faster. So by measuring the frequency of oscillation, you know how heavy the object is. And that's how we measure our mass in space, despite the effects, the absence of the effects of gravity. As you saw in the previous video, the astronaut had a low frequency when he was on the device. That means he had a high time period. And when he was off the device, the frequency increased and therefore the time period was smaller. So you can relate that to the mass of the object that you actually have on the device. And the basis behind that device is the theory that you see in front of you now. If a spring undergoes simple harmonic motion, the time period in seconds equals 2 pi root mass divided by the spring constant. In today's experiment, you will keep the spring the same, so the spring constant is truly a constant, and you will see how time period is related to mass in the following way. If I square this equation, t squared is 4 pi squared m over k and I'm going to group together the constants like so. Now if I plot time period squared on the y-axis and mass on the x-axis you can see that I have an equation in the form of y equals mx. Link this here, link this here. So if you measure a number of oscillations and work out the time period, then square it and plot that against the mass that you know, you have a relationship that should be a straight line going through the origin. And you can use that to work out unknown masses. Here you see a preliminary trial with some of the experiment that is used for this particular investigation. Here the experimenter has not displaced the mass in a very convenient way, as you can see that it's not undergoing the typical simple harmonic motion that we expect. Also the experimenter 
did not use the fiducial marker correctly. It's very hard to time unless you put the fiducial marker in equilibrium position. Here is the setup of the experiment. So the time period of the spring is investigated using this equipment in the lab. You have a clamp stand that is weighted so the actual experiment does not topple. You have one spring to keep K constant and a series of six slotted masses and a mass holder. The mass of each slotted mass is determined using the mass balance. And there is also, of course, a stop clock to time oscillations. Now, to ensure that you get an accurate value for time periods, you don't just time one oscillation. You have to time many oscillations and then you have to divide to get the time period. Your job today is to, number one, plan an experiment that would lead us to get this relationship T squared against M and use the results to plot a graph. From this graph, you can then determine what the unknown mass is. Each step has been videoed. You need your phone to use as a timer and you need your lab books. So number one, write down a plan for this particular experiment. Number two, design an appropriate results table. We're using six different masses. You need to record a fixed amount of oscillations. 10 would be good. And you need to calculate a time period. You're plotting a graph of T squared against M. The next video will show you the measurement of the first mass and after that you can use the videos to measure your time for 10 oscillations. The first mass. Tear the balance. We need no zero error. And the first mass used has a mass of 106.64 grams. Here is the experiment for mass number one. As you can see, the fiducial marker has been fixed at eye level. This one's tricky to measure. You might need to stop the video and look at it several times. So you need to time 10 oscillations. Mass two, the second mass used totaled 204.02 grams. Excuse this one, it's not in focus, but again, the fiducial marker is placed at the equilibrium position. It's checked at eye level. The mass is displaced by a small amount, time 10 oscillations. Mass three. So the third mass was 301.05 gram. Here is the experiment for the third mass. 
the fiducial marker is placed at equilibrium position. This means if there is damping, it can still you can still measure the actual timing of the oscillation. So get your stop clocks phones ready and record 10 oscillations. Mass 4, 397.88 grams. Get ready to record the time for 10 oscillations. Hey guys. Mass 5, 495.49 grams. As you've probably noticed, the more the mass, the easier it is to time the oscillations because the time period is obviously getting bigger here. So again, the fiducial marker is placed at equilibrium position. It's checked by looking at the whole system at eye level. And the mass is displaced by approximately the same amount each time. Last reading, mass 6, 593.96 gram. Last oscillation that you have to time, mass 6. Fiducial marker. Eye level check. Not happy with it. Happy with it and small displacement to start the system oscillating. So now 
is the time where you have to process your results and plot the graph of t squared against m. In the next slide, the unknown mass will be displaced and after you've plot the graph of t squared against m, come back to the video and record the time period for the unknown mass. Unknown mass. Get your stop clocks ready. And let's find out what the mass of this unknown object is. Did you find this? What is the value you found? How close is it to this measurement that you see here? Work out the percentage difference. How does that compare to your percentage uncertainty? Would you take this to the International Space Station and measure someone's mass using this particular apparatus? I don't think it's feasible, but there are many techniques and other apparatus that you can use to improve this experiment. So if you're way off this particular value, what could you do in terms of techniques or apparatus to improve this? Thank you so much for your attention during this video. Was your experiment successful? Was it easy to time? Do you have any questions? If so, contact us and let us know how it went. Thanks again. Bye.